image formation by lenses. So we've talked about how mirrors form images by the law of reflection, so now we're ready to move on to how lenses form images. If you look at this image on the left, uh, here we have a convex lens. We're looking at a pine tree, but yet in that lens the pine tree looks upside down and smaller. Conversely, if we look on the right, we have the same convex lens as we're trying to read a book, but yet that print looks upright and larger. So why is that? Just as we had convex and concave mirrors, we also have convex and concave lenses. So if we look at these lenses right here, we can see that convex lenses converge light to a point, and we call that point the focal point. So convex lenses converge light. If we look at concave lenses, here we have parallel light rays coming in, and these parallel rays actually diverge. They spread out. So a concave lens does the opposite of what a convex lens does. Three rules for ray diagrams for lenses. So we have these same three rules for ray diagrams for mirrors. They look very similar for lenses, except we just have to interpret them a little differently because light doesn't reflect by a lens, it refracts through a lens. So rule one is an incident ray parallel to the principal axis will refract through the focus. Rule two is an incident ray through the focus will refract parallel to the principal axis. And rule three, which is a rule we didn't really do for mirrors, but will be very easy for lenses, an incident ray through the center of the lens just goes straight through the lens. Now, why do these rules work for lenses? That's because of Snell's law, the law of refraction. Since light rays refract and bend, Snell's law will tell us that these light rays parallel through the focus and through the center will behave accordingly. So let's apply these three rules for ray diagrams if we have an object standing beyond the focus of a convex lens. So let's first draw in our principal axis. Now one thing different for lenses from mirrors is that lenses have two focal points, one on each side. So let's label this as a focus here and a same focus on the other side at the same distance and there's the other focus. So let's put our object, maybe it's you, standing in front of this lens. And let's follow those rules. So if you look back in your notes that you just took, you can see rule one is a ray parallel to the axis, to the lens. This will refract through the focus on the other side. Remember, light's going to go through the lens. Now let's take rule number two, which is a ray of light through the focus will refract parallel. Well, we already use this focus right here. So we can interpret rule two to take a ray of light through this focus here. So let's draw that in. A ray of light from your head through the focus will refract through the lens parallel to the axis. And we will draw in rule three, which is a ray of light from your head goes straight through the center of the lens and keeps going straight through. Now you can see all these rays really do meet on the other side of the lens. And here we can draw in your head and your feet to the axis. And we see that you're upside down and smaller. When we, images like this we've seen before with mirrors, we call those real images because there's really light there. Next, let's put the object inside the focus. So we'll draw the principal axis again. I'm going to move my focal points just a little further away to help me draw this easier. So again, we have two focal points. So we'll put you inside the focus now. And let's follow our rules again. So rule one, array parallel to the axis. This will refract through the focus over here. Uh, rule two is a ray from your head through the focus. But remember, we just use this focus, so we have to use the other one here. And similarly, if you stood inside the focus of a concave mirror, if you stand inside the focus of a convex lens, we'll take a ray of light from your head from the direction of the focus, and that just made it through my lens and refracts parallel. So again, my rules were a ray parallel to the axis refracts through the focus, and a ray from the focus will refract parallel. We could do our third one too, which is a ray through the center, just keeps going through the center. Now if you notice, these rays don't meet. Okay, they're diverging and spreading out. So we want to trace those refracted rays behind the mirror. Let's make them blue. So let's trace this ray backwards, this ray backwards, and this ray backwards, 
and you can see they meet just about here and your image will be much larger and if that image is formed by rays that appear to meet but don't really we call that a virtual image how does the lens of your eye work well right here we can see that you have a convex lens in your eyeball and this convex lens will actually have light refract to the focus of it. So if we look at any of these rays, they kind of refract towards the focus. Even from the bottom of the stop sign, they go up and refract towards the focus. This is why we get an inverted image forming on the back of your retina. That is actually a real image. That information then is transmitted through the optic nerve to your brain, which actually inverts that and makes that image right side up so you see the world right side up. Let's take a look at our activity tomorrow called Get Into Focus. Here you can see we have a lens, convex lens right here, inside this larger holder um, on this track. You also have a screen to project your real images onto, and you also have a light source. Right here, this is the old ray box we've used uh, last week for the mirrors activity. You may actually have a candle here tomorrow as your object. So first thing you want to do is set up that object a certain distance away from the lens. So you have a DO, a distance to your object. You also have a height of your object here you'll measure as HO, which will actually be the height of your candle. You also have to determine what the focus of your lens is, what the focal length is, so that's going to be F. So those will all be known values. You'll need to move your screen back and forth to get that image nice and clear on the screen. At that point, we'll call this the distance of the image, or DI. Through some mathematics, you can figure out what the height of your image will be, or HI. Now those same equations we used for mirrors, we will apply those to lenses in our activity tomorrow. Okay, thanks.